Welcome to Storyteller, a profile series highlighting the dreams, journeys, and achievements of our students, alumni, and supporters, presented by Doyon Foundation. Good morning. My name is Elizabeth Green, and I'm the Morris Thompson Executive Intern. I am a I'm a current student and competitive scholarship recipient through Doyon Foundation. Um, today in this episode of Storyteller, we are here with Tony, a loyal Doyon Foundation supporter. Thank you so much, Tony, for joining us and supporting students like me. Thank you for having me, Elizabeth. Okay, to start, tell us a little bit about yourself, where you grew up, and who your family is. Okay, I well, I'm, I'm Canadian. Uh, I grew up in the province of British Columbia, in uh, basically the, the most well-known city is called Vancouver. Um, my name is Tony Retta, and my family are immigrants from Italy. So they migrated to Canada at a, at a very young age. Um, I was born in Canada, born in Toronto, actually. Then we moved over to Vancouver, and I grew up there pretty much my entire life. I, I now live in the Okanagan in a city called Kelowna. Okay, thank you. Um, tell us a little bit about your educational journey. What school did you attend? What what's your degree? And when did you graduate? So um, I, again, um, I went to school in, in Vancouver and um, high school was a private Catholic school called Notre Dame Regional Secondary. Uh, from there, I uh, transitioned to Capilano College in North Vancouver. And then I transitioned to Simon Fraser University. I do not actually have a degree. I'm a year and a half away from getting my degree. I decided to hit pause on school to pursue some of my entrepreneurial spirit and started a business. And I thought I'd go back, but um, for better or for worse, I, I didn't. I am a big fan of the schooling system, although I, I don't technically have a degree. I'm pretty much uh, self-taught, whether it's, you know, exploration, geology, uh, business, um, trading, investing. Um, I learned from uh, a few key people and just also by, by doing, but the schooling did provide a foundational and um, a foundation for me to, to launch upon and also provided me and taught me about work ethic and you know, being, being diligent, being responsible, being accountable. And also a lot of good friendships were formed in, um, in my schooling environment. Okay. Um, what does supporting Doyon Foundation mean to you? Well, for me, as, a, as, as an individual, but also as a CEO and founder of Tectonic Metals Incorporated, you know, I love supporting local. You know, um, we've chosen to hang our hat in Alaska. So all our projects are situated on, on Alaska, predominantly on native owned land or Doyon land. So having our work directly impact the communities and the villages that we uh, operate in is extremely important. And the Doyon Foundation was just a, was just a natural fit for a multitude of reasons. That's good. Um, you're working at Tectonic Metals. Tell us about your role there. Okay, so I am a, I'm one of the founders of Tectonic Metals. There's four of us. And we are a publicly traded mineral exploration company. I serve as director of the company, but also as president and CEO. And our job, quite simply, if I were to distill it down to its simplest form, is to find the next mine ethically and respon uh, responsibly. So we're, we're treasure hunters. <clears throat> we love sort of spinning the globe and uh, you know, applying all of our skills, our experience, our geological business acumen and saying, okay, where's the next mine? It's not an easy endeavor, but uh, I like challenges. And so my role is to do that. And I'm proud to be doing it in Alaska and also again, working alongside Doyle Limited. That's great. Um, can you share a bit about why you chose to support the foundation? So, as, as I mentioned earlier, it, it was a, a natural fit, you know, working directly on Doyon land. <clears throat> yes, our job is to find a mine, but, you know, how can we benefit the communities in which we operate? And, and Doyon presented us with, with their nonprofit foundation, which has uh, many tentacles. 
And that's also what, what I love about this is that we can actually sort of, you know, say, okay, is it, it you know, do we want to support students um, perhaps in earth sciences or economic geology? Um, is there, you know, lo a local community we can support? So the, the Durham Foundation has, has, has a broad outreach and the, the fact that we get to be creative on that front is extremely rewarding. And what I also love about the foundation is that it's it's direct. There's not this um, uh, multi layers of bureaucracy. So uh, there's a lot of nonprofit foundations out there where there's just layer upon layer of bureaucracy. So we can actually have an immediate and direct impact with with our capital, with our donations. And that's you know I love simplicity, and uh, you know sometimes we overcomplicate things. So I, I love the direct action and the immediate impact it has. Okay, thank you. Um, what would you say to other people who may be considering supporting the foundation's work? Well, what I would say is that, you know, the um, Doyon Limited is, you know, has is the largest native corporation in Alaska when it comes to actually the amount of shareholders. <clears throat> so again, those, those tentacles are far outreaching. It has a direct impact. They're um, <clears throat> also when it comes to, for me, whether it's choosing to work with this company or choosing to work with a joint or with a foundation or charity, you know, it's all about the people. And that's regardless of what industry you're in, it's all about the people. And I can't sing enough that my praises for the people at Doyon, from the CEO to um, the current board of directors, right down to the, the vice presidents, right down to people such as yourself, um, everyone that I've had the opportunity to interact with at Doyon, I've been extremely impressed with, not only again with their business acumen, but also with their heart and how much they care and how meaningful this is to, uh, to them and to their shareholders. Thank you. Um, do you have any advice or words of encouragement for our students today? I, I do. Um, my, my, my advice and <laughs> words of encouragement is to, you know, try to tap into your, your passions and, you know, there's, there's the sort of, you should be doing this or, you know, and, and, you know, schooling is, is very, you know, is regimented and we kind of get stuck in these certain paths. And I encourage people to, or students to explore all the paths available to them um, I made the mistake of going down the path. Uh, well, actually, I wouldn't call it a mistake. Sorry, I made the, I made the decision going down the path of business because my father was in business, and this is what I was supposed to do. And then, you know, three years into my schooling and a year away from my degree, and I was like, mm, I don't know if I like this. And so, <clears throat> I think if I were to do it all over again, I would have taken a step back and and spent a bit more time uh, testing, experiencing, trying different different. Um, different courses or different experiences within the schooling system, um, such as, you know, again, the Doyle Foundation does provide opportunities to, you know, if you're, you know, want to learn about earth sciences or in the environment, there's, there's avenues to go explore that in the school and outside of school. So don't be in a, a rush to figure it all out. Um, <laughs> uh, sometimes even my, myself at my current, current age, I'm still trying to figure things out. And I think that's, that's the key is to figure it out don't go with a prescription, go with what your heart, with what your mind and with what you've got. Try to tap into, you know, there's the academia side of things, but tap into those sort of spiritual aspects in order to sort of navigate, you know, which way to go. And, you know, there's something to be said about doing. And the more you can do is basically, you know, it's like ice cream. You try a different flavor, try another flavor before you know it. You try 20 flavors, you got your favorite. But if you just stick with that one flavor, which is fine, <laughs> and that works for some people, but I would encourage you to to try as, try as much as possible, as soon as possible, so you can vector in into that uh, field of, of choice that you want to pursue a career in. Thank you, that's good advice. Um, is there anything else you would like to share? Um, I think what what I would like to share is you know don't be afraid to to reach out. Um, I'm I'm available. Our team's available if you have any questions or comments. And you know tap into you know the the elders. Tap into uh, the the people at Doyon and uh, try to you know get experience or um, in that manner at a very early early stage. You'll be surprised how many people are willing and want to help. Uh, as much as it's 
perhaps rewarding to you. It's also rewarding for for people like me to to have an impact and you know share our thoughts and experience. You know, age uh, provides not only a higher number, but it provides experiences. And I think uh, I think that definitely counts for something. So tap into some of these the older people out there and uh, learn from them as, as much as uh, as possible. Okay. Um, thank you so much for your time today, Tony, and for sharing your story with us. Thank you for having me, and you're welcome. For more storyteller profiles, visit doyonfoundation.com slash storyteller.